Thank you, message. Hmm. Another big story that come out. I did knock Mr. Ibu and I did knock Mr. Ibu's son. Just me have come out to dispute the fact that, okay, I, I took 50 million for Mr. Ibu account and I did knock Mr. Ibu, I did knock Mr. Ibu's son. So the news has been out there. A lot of people just concluded because of the information they saw online. Now, the abducted daughter of Mr. Ibu, Jasmine Okafo, decided to come out to open up and tell her own personal story. So I'm not gonna be speaking for her. I want you guys to watch this particular video. We'll be right back to do some messages to it. Hi everyone. As you all know, my name is Lady Jasmine C. And today I want to say thank you to everybody. Most of all, those who had faith in me, who believed in me, who patiently waited till this day for me to come and speak on behalf of myself to all the good Nigerians out there who during this trying period showed their immense support by checking up on me, calling to know how I'm doing. I want to say thank you to everybody. So today I'm going to be talking about what has transpired this entire time. The past three months has been, I can't say it has been hell, but in every situation, I want to say, I want to give thanks to God. I said I was not going to talk about this issue until Daddy gets back to his feet. And glory be to God, he's been discharged and recuperating. Um, a lot has happened, not just the event of the past few months, a lot has happened and I would like to share more light on how I got involved, how things got to this point. And I'm not talking because I need people to sympathize with me. No, that's not the essence of this. I'm talking because I feel like I have been used and I hope you guys are patient enough to at least listen to the entire story because it means a lot to me for people to know what really transpired, what really happened. Then if after listening to me, you feel like, oh, I'm wrong, fine. I'll, let, I'll leave the judgment to you people. So how did I get involved in all this in the first place? Um... Firstly, how did I get involved with this family? The John Okafor family, Mr. Ibu family. The first and most important question I get all the time from people, mostly on my comment section is, oh, don't she have a family? Don't she have parents? Uh, leave this family alone and all of that. I would like to start addressing from those kind of comments. So many years ago, my dad passed on me, so rest in peace. He was in the Nigerian army. He was a very good friend to Mr. Ibu, who is now a father figure in my life. When my dad passed on, Mr. Ibu himself was at the barrier. Ever since then, he has played the role of a father figure in my life. Not for once have I ever needed somebody as a father that he was not there for me so fast forward to 2018 i left the country i left nigeria and then i went to look for greener pasture outside the country things were working out for me i was doing good i was doing fine later on i relocated to cyprus where i was studying law fast forward to 2020 Daddy started, Daddy, in person of Mr. Ibu, started writing me on WhatsApp, requesting for financial assistance. I was really surprised because before I left this country, he was doing well. If not, if he wasn't at the peak of his career, he was doing absolutely well. He has exotic cars. Everything was okay for him. So in 2020, when he started reaching out to me, that he needed money for certain things, I was really surprised. Certain times I would send 50,000, 5,000, 2,000, as much as I can. I have friends then in Cyprus that can attest to it. I think I have one friend, Ventura, 
another friend or Tonya. These are people I know that can attest to it because then, even when I don't have as much, I would borrow from them or I would get from them to send to him. So at some point, it was getting, it was quite disturbing because I know when I left this country, he was doing very, very okay. I started asking questions. I asked him, what exactly is happening in your life right now? For you to be asking for the least 50,000, 10,000, 5,000, are you sure everything is okay? That was the first time he mentioned to me that he was sick and he was in Abuja. I then asked him, how about your wife? How is the children? How is everybody doing? It's been long since I heard from any of them. He said, uh, his wife is in, um, his wife is in Lagos. That he has been in Abuja for close to two years now. And I was like, if you're sick, the best place to be is your home in Lagos. Why Abuja? He didn't really say much. So I told him to send me his wife's number that I would like to hear from her. It's been a while. I'd like to hear from her. Let me know what's happening in, in their life and all of that. Let me also understand why he was asking for those kind of financial help if things has really gotten that bad. Because it's, I was in shock. It also surprised me. So he later sent her number. I called her. I asked her how she was doing. She said everything was not well. I could remember that day. She, the first day I contacted her after a very long time, she said everything is not well, that her husband has left the house for over two years. He has abandoned the children and everything. I was surprised to hear that from her. And then she said that, that that very day, she started sending me videos. I think the last time they called me out that I was on, um, that the freeze life, I made reference to that. And I'm sure those evidence will still be on the live because I've changed my phone several and my phone formatted. So I might not have some of those evidence, but I still know that if I go to my iCloud, I will still see some of them, which I'll be posting while the, the live, the video goes on. So around that period, she was crying over the phone when I asked her how things were going. She said um, that that in person of Mr. Igbo has left the house for over two years, abandoned her with the kids, that things were really bad for her. Even that day, she sent me a video of um, Nepal people cutting the light as of when I called her. The Nepal people were there. She went to her car. She showed me her car, that there was no fuel in her car. Her car was in a very bad condition. That In fact, that if I don't intervene, no, 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 no. The Nepal people will cut the light and there will be no light for the uh, uh, There will be no light in the house. And the children were drinking Gary. That there was no food in the house for the children. That they were drinking Gary. That things are causing real bad. That since that he was in Abuja, he was not really in a very good state to help them and support her and for her she's not doing any work she, she according to her she, she married him she has not had, had any job she has not done anything she has no means of sustaining the family i mean she totally depends on him to be able to sustain the family and pay school fees for the children so i said okay ah me i'm in cyprus though i'm studying i showed her some of my school stuff that i'm studying law this is where i am we're trying to catch up with each other and i told her this is where i am right now but I'll try and see if I can raise at least 100,000 and send to her so that she can sort out the little she can solve. She said, okay, that day I sent her 100,000. The proof of that is what, the proof of that 100,000 I sent her is in the live video, I, the previous live video I did with Daddy Freeze. I sent her 100,000 naira. She called me, she thanked me, she said that 100,000 will go a very long way for her. I said, okay, subsequently I will keep in touch. That was my first encounter with her after a very long period of time. But that was my first time talking to her after a very long period of time, after like after I left the country and everything. So from there, she started chatting me every day. We were, we were talking. Subsequently, she would send me for every single time we were having conversation. It was about the issues in the house and all of those things. And, and at the point, she started complaining to me that she's not able to reach daddy on the phone, in person of Mr. Ibu, that when she calls him in Abuja, he doesn't pick and all of that. So she would ask me to call daddy on her behalf and talk to daddy that daddy should um, send something for her and the kids. And I've been supporting her in the little way I can during that period. My friends in Cyprus, I, have, I, can, I can call their names here. I'm sure they, most of them are still alive, although I've not in contact with some of them because I've left Cyprus for a while. They, they are aware, some of them are aware because when I don't have, I'll ask my friend, oh, please help me. I want to send. They know, they know how close I was to the family and how I, have, I, how I was always concerned about the family so at one point i said i was coming back to nigeria because at that point i was um dating someone and we're talking about getting married 
So I had a reason to come to Nigeria. And I told her, I said, look, I'm coming to Nigeria. When I come to Nigeria, we'll sit down and talk. Then we'll know how to solve some of all these issues that is going on, you know. So I was also talking to daddy's son, Valentine, that was in South Africa. I was talking to so many people in the family that, that period. So when I came back to Nigeria, I was supposed to come to Lagos. In fact, she was supposed to meet me at the airport, but she couldn't meet up. And then I told her I was going straight to Abuja. I traveled with one other lady, one of their family friends. So we went to Abuja. On getting to Abuja, Daddy was really sick. He was really, really sick. That was the first video that went viral on social media that was giving him medicine. I said, Daddy, take this medicine, take the medicine. I am sure I'll put it on the screen during the course of the video. So Daddy was really sick. The condition I met him was really bad. I have a lot of videos we made that day. Asked him what was happening. He said he's really down for the past two years. He don't know what is happening. I said, why haven't you gone home if things are really that bad? Go home and stay with your wife. At least she will take care of you. Now that you are here in this hotel, the name of the hotel you was then was Nana Suits. People can go and find out how, how long that he stayed in Nana Suits. I know I heard when I came, I heard he lived in so many hotels in Abuja before finally living in Nana Suits. I'm sure people, people that are watching this video, some people will be able to go there and make inquiries. It was in Nana Suit Hotel that I went and found that in. So in that Nana Suit Hotel, there are some other people that were there, some other actors. During the course of this video, I'll be mentioning some names. So if, if there's anything I'm saying that is like, people can go and make inquiries, you know. I didn't want to come and say anything, but I've, it's, it, the things, things have gotten to the part where I have to speak up and I have to speak up my truths. I have to say my truth the way it is. That is the essence of telling this story. The way it is. If after knowing my truth, you people still deem it fit to condemn me, it's fine. But at least let it be that I, sp I speak. Let it be that I said something. Let it be that I stood up for myself. So when I arrived at that Nana Hotel with that, with this, the lady that is a family friend to, to them, that he was really sick. Then I did a video of him being sick and I put it on social media. That video caught the attentions of, of so many ni good Nigerians. And then people started reaching out. And what's happening to Mr. Ebu? It's been so long we heard about Mr. Ebu. What's happening to all our old our, our old Nollywood actors? We haven't been seeing Mr. Ebu. Nobody has been hearing about him for a while now. And there were some good people that were around him around that period. They knew he was sick, but they did not know he was that bad. Benedict Johnson, a Nollywood actor, was there. Labista was there. There's one other man. I don't really know him mutually but i met him there it was one of the people that was helping him then and bala mr bala they had a program running one, one a political party program that was running on that period i can't really say much about it because i came and met met them in the middle of it in fact i later found out that they were the one even sustaining his hotel bill his food and everything so when they saw that video, they rushed, they came, and Eddie Johnson came over, Labista came over, and some, some people in Nollywood, they came over, and immediately, it wasn't up to an hour, let me say an hour, 30 minutes, they rushed him to the hospital, they rushed him to the hospital, Zenith, uh, Medical, Zenith Kidney and Medical Center. When they took him to the hospital, I believe ben Benedict Johnson, by the grace of God, He's alive and healthy. He knows most of. He, he, he should be able to relate to most of the things I'm going to say during this period in Abuja. They took him to the hospital. The doctor saw that they, they saw his former medical reports from the previous hospital he was. And they, they, what the doctor said that they, I won't forget, he said, if this medical report that they came with is the state of him, of daddy right now, that I means things are really bad. And then I can remember then, if the people that were there can attest to the father, that he was saying, death is near, death is near, death is near. I was rebuking him. I said, death is not near, you're not dying, you're not dying anytime soon. So the hospital, they started, they said they had to make a deposit of a particular amount of money. Benedict Johnson and Labista ran, were running around with some other people, the Bala man, they were running around, they were able to raise a certain amount of money, and then they made deposits at that hospital, Zenith Hospital. So they started checking that. I cannot actually give details of his medical condition because I feel like that those are things that are actually personal to him, that I can actually, 
he said to some extent the medical the medical condition was really bad it wasn't a very good report so they started checking him all over they had to admit him they admitted him in that hospital for at least three months and the people that took care of the bill that time as far as i know was that a um, group of people that were sustaining him at that um, hotel so when i came the first thing i asked i called the wife i said look i'm here at the hospital in abuja the condition is really bad if it's possible for you to come, come. She now said ah, that she doesn't have transport, or that she doesn't have money for flight, she can't come, that they said we're going to arrange money for her to come and all of that. I said, okay. So I spoke to daddy. I said, eh, we need to find a way for your wife to come so that she can actually take care of you. I said, okay. So I spoke to daddy. I said, eh, we need to find a way for your wife to come so that she can actually take care of you. Daddy said clearly to me that day that he doesn't want his wife to come to the hospital that day. That if his wife comes, he's going to die. I'm not the only one he said that to. Labista, you're still alive. Benedi Johnson, you're still alive. If you people know the truth and you want to be silent about it because you don't want to get involved in family issues, I can understand. But I know very well that you people know what happened that day at that hospital. We pleaded with daddy, pleaded with daddy, pleaded with him. For him to allow his wife to come to the hospital he said no and he gave his reasons he gave his reasons he made some some very strong allegations about their marriage about having um, catching a, about um having caught his wife having affairs so many times and all of that which i called the wife i told him i said this is what that he said this is what he said he doesn't want you to come that he caught you having an affair and all of those things she said oh that about that, that is not true, that she never had any affair. I'm not here to say whether she had affair or she never had affair because I wasn't there. But I'm quoting what daddy said that day. The main reason why he said he didn't want her to come to Abuja. He said he didn't want her to come, that for the past two years he hasn't seen her. And she affirmed to me that for the past two years she has not seen him. They were only talking on the phone and most of the times he doesn't pick the call. And most of the time he's strangers, people that she, she doesn't know that were picking the call. So daddy didn't want her to be there. I was the one pushing for her to come there. I was the one pushing for her. I told her, okay, come. This is the hospital. She asked me where the hospital address was. I said, come. And I told her, okay, you know what you're going to do? Find a way. Source out a way. Find flight ticket and come. When you come, then we can now um, find a way and raise the money and balance you back. Because if that is giving his reason, saying this is the reason why he doesn't want you to come, I cannot go against that will. So finally... The wife actually talked about that issue. She said, she herself said that daddy has been telling a lot of people that she has had it from so many places that she's having an affair. But in reality, that it were just mere accusations, that it was here says he was hearing from a lot of people that she never had any affair. I believed whatever she said that period. I believed her. I had no I had no reason to doubt what she was saying. So I just I just as an adult, I felt like, oh, maybe it's just normal misunderstanding between uh, husband and wife that they were in turn settled later. So later on, she came to the hospital. When she came to the hospital, the first thing that they asked me was, ah, who brought her here? I said, that this person is your wife. Now, you cannot be asking me who brought her here. Then she later said, um, her friend, one of her friends, which I'll be mentioning her name in the course of this um, video because a lot of things that happened in that family, she knows. If she's willing to come out and speak up one day, it's on her. If she wants to know the truth and still be silenced about the truth, it's still on her. I will not force anybody to come and speak up or force anybody to come and stand up for me. I won't, that's what I won't do. So that her friend, now she, according to the wife, when she landed in Abuja, after I sent the address, she said it was that her friend, Ogadima, that actually booked the flight ticket for her. And then she came there. There was one other lady that was there that they later had issue with whatever. I don't know. They later had issue with the lady that was there in the hospital. So when she came to the hospital, it was me. The other lady that she later had issue with and daddy at first in the hospital before she came i was the one in the hospital taking care of daddy when i came back then subsequently labista will come benedict justin will come some people were coming some other people from nollywood and some people that were there in that hotel that he was lodged at the people that were looking after him were were, were paying for his food and his hotel bill those people were also frequenting the hospital before she came so when she came I stepped down. I was just there. Whatever she wants, she would send me a message like her daughter. She was even calling me her daughter, introducing me. She was the one that started introducing me to people as her daughter. Oh, this is my daughter. This is what she has done and all of that. I was working with the flow. I never had issue with her at any point. I was very loyal to her. Never at any point had any issue with her. So, daddy was now in that hospital for 
about two weeks. Then his son, his son later came and joined us. Um, Daniel, his son, his second son, sorry, not the one in South Africa, his second son later came and joined us in the hospital. So it was me, daddy, his wife, his son at the, at, at the hospital. Um, subsequently, people started coming to the hospital to visit him. Yes, Madam Mona Lisa came to visit him in Hollywood address. She was the then secretary of PGN. A lot of people came, started coming to the hospital to visit him after the, the post I made went viral. Some people were contributing directly to him. Some people were giving him cash directly to him. At no situation was any money that was given to him taken by me or given to me. They were giving it to him, either him directly or the wife. I was just there in the picture trying to assist with everything. So after staying in that hospital for months, Daddy finally recovered. Glory be to God. Myself, his son, the wife, we, we now started traveling. I cannot remember the sequence of the travel, but I know we went to Abu, I'm um, sorry, we went to, yes, from Abuja, we went to Enugu together. We went to Kalaba together to see that her friend that booked ticket for her, Auntie Ogadima. We went to Owere together. We attended Rita Dominic's wedding together, which he introduced me to so many people as his daughter. And the wife was introducing me to so many people as her child. We were traveling together. After all those travel, we now later came back to Lagos. When we came back to Lagos, we didn't go to the house directly because the wife said the house was not in a good condition. Water was already entering the house. She said the house was so messed. So we all went to lodge in a hotel. Went to lodge in a hotel. In that hotel, Daddy and his wife were lodged. I was lodged separately. After staying in that hotel for a particular period of time, I think for a week, then we now went to the house. Now, when we went to the house, around that period, Daddy was still, he, he just barely recovered. He was still trying to get back to his feet. When, while we were living, I think, um, Energy Johnson and Balad, his group, yes, but Energy Johnson and Balad and Labi their group, in that um, particular thing they were doing that time. I think it was something related to politics. I, I wasn't really well informed about whatever they were doing, but they supported him with some amount of money. Even the day they wanted to give him the money, the wife said they should hand over the money to her, which they did. So she was the one in charge of the money they gave, they gave to him. After that, we went to, from the hotel, we went to his house. So when we got to the house, I told them I wanted to, then I just came back to Nigeria. I haven't actually connected to my own mom that was, I haven't even visited my mom. My mom was in Lagos. She was calling me. I told her the situation of things when I came because she knows him very well. And they thought my mom is also from Enugu. They are from a very close place. So she knows him very well. She knows him for years. She, they are, in fact, they are very close. So my mom was also communicating. My mom said, okay, be patient. When it's fine, you can come back. So for that period of time, my, my parents, my family are there. They were doing fine. They were communicating with me. And I had just recently got married. I had just recently got married to my to the American the guy I met on TikTok, the American guy. I'll be talking about his story in another video. That's another because when everything happened, I never ever said anything about anything. But now people are pushing me to talk. I've been quiet and people are pushing me to talk. They want me to really talk. I'm the kind of person that when things happen, I like things to be where they are. I like to move on from things. But this situation, I don't see myself moving on from it until I talk about it. And I'm, by talking about it, I mean telling my story exactly the way it is. And if I say anything on this video, anybody thinks that what I'm saying is a lie, I have proof of everything I'm going to say in this video. I have proof of them, either in video forms, either in picture forms, sc screenshot, chat. I have proof. I'm, I'm someone that is very detailed in whatever I do in life. So I have proof of whatever I'm going to be saying in this video. So, around that period while we were in there, in the house, my then her husband, who is now my ex-husband, said he wanted to come to Nigeria. And that would have been the first, that would have been like the first time he's coming to Nigeria. I said, okay, I had to go and rent house then. So, I went to rent a house in Lagos. I took a five-bedroom flat in Lekki. Before I left Cyprus, most people that knew me in Cyprus knew that I had a logistic business working for me, 247 logistic years. I had a logistic business working for me. I had things working for me very fine. And I was doing very okay. And I was very comfortable. Very, very comfortable. The logistic business I was doing, I was making over 3 million naira weekly. So I was making a whole lot of money from that logistic. I was the only one doing the business I was doing in Cyprus. As of the time I left Cyprus, nobody else was doing that business. 
So when I came, I was okay. I was fully loaded. Then after staying with daddy in the house for a period of time, when daddy was recuperating, him and his wife started had, having issues. The son was there. The son can attest to it. Even the children, the younger children, they can attest to it. <laughs> They were always constantly having issues, and the issues they were having was not far-fetched from money issues. The fact that she would want to do something, and she would come and ask daddy for money, knowing fully well that he's not working, and there's no other source of income, daddy would start complaining, okay, I'm not working, where do you want this money to come from? And as far as I know, from what both of them told me, from what daddy told me, and from what she told me, they were married for years, and that marriage was very okay, until daddy started encountering money issues when he wasn't getting jobs in his career not only um, the the acting team was not paying him he wasn't getting jobs he wasn't getting endorsements so he was just there so the money was not coming forth because while she was in that marriage she was not working so the only source of income in that marriage was daddy and at the point that daddy was not was not able to financially sustain the marriage that's when the issues started coming up so while i was there the few issues that i know occurred in my presence i uh, the, the few issues that i can i can say i can attest to that happened in my presence were mostly the issues of money and she would say, okay, I need money for this. I mean, me money for that. At some point, daddy was even telling her to, that the school fees they were paying for the, the kids were too expensive that um, they should actually change the school for the children so that he can pay in somewhere that he can afford. You know, those were the kind of issues that were causing, the, cause, bringing problems that time. And the problem, I was, the, 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 the problem I'm talking about is not like just that uh, they were having, they were always, 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 quarreling in in the loudest of their voice i've never witnessed daddy hitting her or with a witness has beaten daddy but they were always fighting at the at the top of their voice that daddy would at some point he would start complaining oh my heart my chest and all of those things he would start complaining as if those things were actually affecting him directly so then aside from that job i did in, in cyprus I was doing TikTok. Even when I traveled to Gambia and some other African countries, I was doing TikTok. And then people that knows what TikTok is all about knows that TikTok is one social media platform that pays very well if you're very creative and you know what you're doing. If you go on TikTok, like you have a lot of people gifting you and all of that. So I started telling her, I said, okay, now that daddy is not working, that this TikTok thing, I showed her how I was making my income and all, all of that. I said, this TikTok thing might actually be something that would work for you people she said okay she's very interested that i should create a, an account for her i should teach her how she can do the tiktok thing which i i did i politely did i opened the tiktok account for her i even went as far as growing her tiktok account to 114,000 followers that it is today i was doing content for her even while we're in abuja i was doing content for her i was shooting the videos everything on that tiktok platform till it grew to that amount of follower it has was all my doings then later on, I started doing daddy TikTok. She said I should also help daddy, bring daddy back to social media that people don't know uh, that daddy has gone out of the limelight. Maybe he can start having a job. That is how I started creating content with daddy, bringing him back to the limelight so that he can at least afford the least school fees. And I, as I speak, I know there are so many people in the industry that can attest to the fact that I was not the only one daddy was calling and asking for finance. Because when I came, I had a lot of stuff. A lot of people were telling me that he was asking for finance for as many people as possible. People, everybody knew that the time I came back to Nigeria, that he was at his lowest. He was at his lowest. He was asking for the least 2,000 naira from anybody that cared to sustain his family. He was asking for the least 1,000 naira. He was asking for money from anybody, be it a stranger, anybody. So a lot of people knew that. I was not the only person that knows that daddy was at his lowest when I came back to Nigeria. That daddy wasn't doing fine at all financially. So that was how I was able to set up the TikTok thing for both her and, and daddy. And when I came back, daddy's um, Instagram account was hacked. His account was hacked. He was not active on Instagram. In fact, his account was hacked while he was in the hospital. And we later find out who hacked his account. He's also somebody in the Nollywood. I don't want to mention him because the case was taken to... Oh, um, I am sorry. The case was taken to Aja Police Station. I was the one that found out because I was chatting the account. 
and then the person was chatting me he sends details to send money i later found out who the person was i was the one that reported the case to aja police station paid for every day investigation to go on and when the investigation go, uh, went on they tracked the person and they brought the person to 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 aja police station for me to recover that account there's this girl called jenna jenna of insta and jenna on instagram so i paid jenna five hundred thousand on instagram to help recover that is account now they recovered that is account instagram uh, instagram account after they recovered the instagram account which before i paid that money i told the wife i said okay see 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 how are we going to raise the money she was like mm, let's forget about the account that um it's something we can always do that that money is not important to pay that kind of money in that car. i remember that day i called my immediate younger brother i said please can you loan me five hundred thousand? the next day i'll be able to send it to you let me just quickly solve this problem to you let me just quickly solve this problem and he did i show she was there when the money came and everything and we solved that problem and when the guy was arrested he later compensated daddy with i think one point something million naira. yes and that money was given to him and not me and i, I didn't bother so subsequently while i was doing my TikTok thing i was also sustaining the family the, 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 most of the things they buy in the house, most of the things they use in the house, I was sustaining them from that money. Then the, the daddy later joined in the TikTok stuff. The money that I was making from the daddy's TikTok that he was doing, most of it was going to the wife. Some of it was going to daddy. They were solving their, their family problem. She cannot say she did not use TikTok money to pay school fees at some, at some point. I mean, TikTok, I was doing, I was doing with daddy. She has never for one day come and show her face on that TikTok. I was the one running the TikTok account with daddy. She cannot say she has not used the money from TikTok to put food on that on their table. She cannot say they did not use money from the TikTok uh, money to, to do things that would benefit their family. While I was running her TikTok account, I was running daddy's TikTok account and I was running my account. At some point, I was choked. I had to hand over her own TikTok account for, to her and tell her, okay, this is how to go about it. Let me focus on myself and focus on daddy. She now said, okay, but sometimes try to carry me along. I said, okay, no problem. I'll be carrying you along. Like when we're doing starting videos, she will join us. You go to the page, you see even on daddy's page, some video is three of us, some video is just me and daddy, and some video is me and her. You know, so things were going quite smooth. There was no reason for malice. There was no confusion anywhere. In fact, at some point, I was more closer to her than I was with daddy. Because there are certain conversations that I and her have that I cannot, I have with her that I cannot have with daddy. So while the issue between herself and daddy was going on, um, at some point, she started raising, bringing up issue of daddy selling his property, some of his property he had so that they can be able to fit some bills as they were not meeting up with bills so at that point daddy was so i don't i don't know for some reason he was unwilling to sell property maybe he was hoping that something a job would come al along something somewhere that things will work out eventually you know and also when we came back daddy complained about the cars he left in the house that all the cars were sold and none of them were remitted to him in fact, that was the first issue they had in the house then. He was asking about the cars, what happened to all the cars, that all the cars were sold, and none of the money, he made it a, quite an issue, that none of the money was remitted to, to him. With that, I cannot say much about because she's the only one that know what, knows what happened to the car. I'm only making reference to it because even in Daddy Free's life, the first time she called me out, the first time anybody in this life ever called me out was that she was the first person that ever called me out in this life. I've never had to have issue with anybody on this on social space. So the first time anything like that happened was when she came out and said, oh, this is, I'll trace it back. That's why I'm starting this, this whole story from the beginning so that I'll link it up to how we got to this place. Daddy came out and also made reference to that his cars that were missing under the freeze life. So I'm sure it's something that some people, if you watch the video, you'll be familiar with. So fast forward to where we were in the house and they were having their issues. And then my husband said, my ex-husband said he wanted to visit Nigeria. I said, okay, fine. So fast forward to when I rented my house and I moved into my house with um, my family were in the house. My husband later came and joined us in the house so after i moved when my ex-husband came he wanted to see daddy around that period as soon as i left the house it wasn't long after i left the house i one day she called me she was crying on the phone that daddy said he wants to leave again that she's so scared because the last time he left he left for about over two years and now he wants to leave again that he doesn't want to stay in the house that he's probably running away from responsibility and all that 
and daddy that i know at as of that time he was also complaining that he he's financially not okay that staying in the house doing nothing does not suit him so he was trying to like he said he wanted to go out and and see if he can get job outside maybe in abuja go back to abuja or go somewhere else apart from lagos where maybe he can actually get help or something so daddy later moved that of the house he went to somewhere in ibafo i've never been to that place before until when my ex-husband came and he wanted to see daddy we drove all the way myself my ex-husband we drove all the way to ibafo when we went there, there was a building, and the guy, there was one guy, I don't want to mention his name, there was one guy that was there, that he was living with that guy, and there were so many people again in that house. I was wondering uh, why that he had to leave his house to go and stay in that kind of place, in that place. So that he said that place was preferable for him to stay. I could remember vividly that the wife was also trying to reach out to the said guy. And certain times she would say, uh, when she reached out to him, he was not responsive well and all of that. They were having some issues and all of that. So that he was there in Iba for, for, for a very long period of time. And that guy was taking care of him in Iba for, for a very long period of time. So when I came back, when I got to Iba for, I called her. I said, this is where that is staying you now. That are you not going to do something about it? At least let him come back. That place, I don't think is very comfortable for him. So she said, ah. That if he wants to move her, she cannot stop an adult from going to where he's, he wants to stay. Since his own house is not comfortable for him to stay anymore. According to her, he was running away from responsibility, responsibility and stuff. They both had different view. According to daddy, there was no money and he was trying to go and look for other means of getting money. So, and I said, okay, we are coming back myself and my ex-husband and everything. We are coming back to uh, um, Lagos because Ibafo is almost outside the sketch out sketch of Lagos. So she pleaded with me that day. She said, if can we bring him back? I said the way I saw him, I don't think he's willing to come back. In fact, he was saying he's gonna stay there for about three months and later go to Abuja. That's his plan that they were working on something. The guy he was he said they were working on something on one program that could likely bring him money. I had faith that whatever it is they were working on will likely bring him money. So I said okay well, so when I came back, when we came back, I had a conversation with her. I could remember vividly then. That was the first time she pleaded with me. She said, look, prior to when I came back, the daddy has left the house severally in a very lengthy period of time since he stopped getting jobs and things stopped working out for him that that uh, most of the time that he's not around most of the time he's outside when she contact the people he's with she's not able to reach out to him and now that i've rented a house and it's a five bedroom um duplex in in like very close not very far because when i was looking for that house i was with them so when i went to, I, was li I was living with them when i went to look for the house so i didn't look for somewhere that is very far i look for a place that is very okay for it was actually myself and her that went to look for the place you understand so we got a place that was very close so she was pleading with me that ah can daddy come and stay with me for a while that if you even if it's the tiktok thing that we are doing that is bringing money let's be doing it at least she seems much more money to settle certain bills that if it's that one that is working out let's do it at least she'll be able to reach out to him if he's in my place other than him being in certain places that she's not able to reach out with him he, sometimes she cannot communicate with him you know and whenever they communicate he always end up in a fight that at least to some certain extent, he listens to me and all that. And I told her that for me, my fam my mother is in the same house, my son is in the same house, my younger brother is in the same house, and my husband, my ex-husband, is actually coming, is actually in the same house at that time. That for daddy to come in come and stay with us in that house, it's gonna be like a very big family. And I told her that I can only allow that in one condition if his son, his second son, that was, that was also with us in Lagos there, can come and move in with him. So that it would be a situation of a son taking care of a father in my house. It wouldn't completely be my responsibility. So she later, we had later had a conversation about it, myself, the second son and her. And then we agreed. We said, okay, daddy will come and stay with me after she pleaded with me. And if any of these things I'm saying, if you guys feel is lies, I'm going to put evidences out here. So daddy finally moved in with me. When daddy moved in initially, she used to come to the house. In fact, not initially, she was coming to the house at, at all times. She would come when she comes, when she wants to go, she would take food stuff and all that things and take back to the house. I never complain. I never complain. I was treating her I was treating her like my mom. Even my mom would sometimes say, ah, I'm treating this woman more than I'm treating her. Her friend would attest to it. 
her friend, her friends always say that I have so much respect for her. That the kind of respect I have for her, they've never seen anybody that respected her like that. You know, I used to call her mommy. I don't even call her by her name. Most people my age call her by her name. What is call her? I still I call her mommy. You know, and she introduced me to all her friends, telling her friend that um, I'm, I'm a daughter to her. It's one of her friends that has salon very close to my house. She told her friend that I'm a daughter. In fact, when this whole issue happened, the friend called me and she said she's surprised that this same person that was telling me that you've done this for her, she's done what happened? How did this, how did things went this bad? How did things escalate like this? What really happened? You know, when I said I was closer to her than I was with daddy, most time when she wants to do something, she'll come and meet me and tell me to do, tell daddy. Like when she started talking about daddy selling property, she went to meet daddy several and told him about selling property. Daddy quite didn't sit well with it. She had to come to me and say, please help me talk to him. He listens to you. Talk to him in a way you understand. Because if I'm talking to him, you will think, oh, I'm doing this because I want to use the money for my selfish reason. Let him see reasons that he needs to sell this property so that they can take care of the kids and everything. And I went to daddy. I quite cried for him. I said, please, look at the situation the family is right now. The reason people own property is so that when things are bad with, for them, they can be able to sell the property and settle some, some of their issues, you know. At one point, okay, fast forward to when daddy started living in the house. She was coming. She would come and go and all, all, and all that Fast forward to when she now said he should sell the property, one, one, one plot of land. Now, this is when the matter became tricky. So when daddy moved in, not so long, she said daddy, she started pleading that daddy should sell a plot of land. I still have some of the communication on WhatsApp and everything when she was even sending me screenshot of a, a, a copy of where the land is and everything. And that land, somebody was in charge of the land, you know. So daddy sold that land, you know. When that is sold that land, they both agree on a certain amount of money. I think that land was sold for about three million naira. She said she wanted daddy to give her one point five million naira or two million naira. Daddy said what he was able to give her around that period was seven hundred thousand. So she kept insisting that out of the three million naira he should okay. The money that even came was not up to three hundred and three million naira because the person that sold the land took his own percentage of about two hundred million um, two hundred thousand naira. So the money that came was about two point something million. And she said out of that two point something million, she wanted she wanted her to give her about two million plus. I know why I'm 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 talking in details because I want you guys to really understand certain things, you know. So when Daddy now finally accepted to give her seven hundred thousand, she called me again. They just me, please talk to him now. Talk to him. And I don't know how she calls him, how she address him is this man. That is what she, if you check all our chat, is this man, this man. In our message, in our conversation, mostly actually addressing me, talk to this man uh, and talk to this man. At least let him do, um, let's use this money for something useful and all of that, you know. So daddy now said, okay, he was going to give 700000 At some point I was like, okay, daddy, let's be reasonable at least. Let's at least clear the children's school fees, add it to whatever that is coming up from TikTok, clear the children's school fees and all that. So I can't remember per se how much daddy said sent that period, but I'm sure it was either 1 million or 1 million plus. After that, Daddy now sent that money to her. The next day, she started calling that she wanted 12,000. After that, he had sent um, over a millionaire or a millionaire to her that she wanted 12,000. She called him that he was lambasting her on the phone, that she wanted me to go and talk to him again. And I said, Mommy, this one, I will not involve myself. The house is not far. You can either take, um, she, ha she has, a, of course, she has a car then, I said, you can either, either, either take a car and come to the house and convince him yourself to send you the 12000 because I know what it was for me to even talk about sending, making that 700000 one million now. Now for me to go back and ask him for 12000 just a, a, a day later, I cannot do it. So she got pissed. She started calling me, calling me, calling me, calling me. At some point, I said, okay, let me go and talk to daddy. I went to talk to daddy. Daddy said, uh-uh. That even this money he's keeping, he's not going to spend it. He's also keeping it for food and everything if they need anything. Because while he was in my house, he's feeding his um, hospitals. Because after he came from hospital, of course, we're still buying hospitals to regulate his heart and everything. So the medications he was taking for his, uh, his heart from the hospital, the hospital actually, um, what's the name of this hospital? Living Heart Hospital is there. Go and make inquiries. I was always going to that hospital, living house hospital, to make sure that he was okay. I was always buying his drugs every two, two weeks. You can go there and make inquiries. The, the receipts are there in that hospital. 
while he was in my house. All the hospital, the, all the medicine they wrote for him to be taken from that previous hospital, I make sure he never missed any of his, his, his drug for one day. So he said, ah, the money that was remaining, that he was actually going to give it to her, but at least she should give it some time, that he just gave her one million, you know. That's their issue. So she started calling me. I told her that, you know, I've tried to talk to Daddy about sending you extra trip. The same thing he told you, the same thing he, he, he told me that he's unwilling. She called the son. The son tried to talk to Daddy, and Daddy was still unwilling to send her 12000 and that. How can he send $1 million today? He just said that she's asking for 12000 now. The next thing... There's this other girl, I don't want to give her cheap publicity. There's this other girl that, in fact, I don't even, let me not just give her any publicity at all. There's this other girl, she went on daddy's Instagram, she started insulting me on daddy's Instagram, threatening my life and saying all sorts of things. And this was the same girl daddy's wife was warning me about, telling me, oh, this girl, this is what she has done in the past and all of that. Her, she has had, a, in fact, she said a lot of things that the girl has done with that in the past that I should be careful and all of that. And that period of time, that girl was coming to my house. She would come to my house, she would eat. Even while I was doing TikTok live, it, she would join me and do the TikTok live and all of that, you know. So this said girl, I don't know what she went to discuss with daddy's wife and whatever they discussed. She came on, the next thing she was threatening my life on Instagram, telling me that I know, thank God I know who she is, blah, 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 that I should watch my back and stuff. I took the screenshot of the chat. I said, ah, that it, um, this is what this girl is writing on Instagram and what is going on. The last I remember was your wife asking me for 12000 from the money, asking me to convince you because I was not the one sending the money. I was never in charge of daddy's account. I was never in any way in charge of his account. His money was his money. It was never my money. Rather, I was the one sponsoring most of the the, and the things that were the expenses, you know, mostly from the money I make from TikTok, from the money we make, I make from, his, from my TikTok, from his TikTok, and also from the money I saved from my business in Cyprus. So, while this was going on, the wife now started sending, calling me. She was quite pissed, uh, like, um, that I didn't do what she asked me to do and blah, 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 blah. The next thing I saw was she was crying on social media that uh, my husband is somewhere, whether she said they kidnap him or my husband is somewhere with his girlfriend and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what? I don't know where my husband is. I haven't seen my husband for months. I've not heard about my, I've not heard from my husband. Makimi, I ran away from him. He came from his girlfriend's house to come and beat me. To come and give me, he removed his wristwatch. To come and beat me and I run, I push him out and I run away. Look at where I am. Everywhere I don't crack. Everywhere water. Inside us water. Everywhere. Look at the car I'm driving. Everything. Nothing. My children they know they eat everywhere scatter no school fees and you're telling me to do what oh god oh not today i'm like what is this man that came to my house barely three days ago that packed food stuff from my house that my husband is with his side chick at what point exactly did you know that i'm your husband's side chick because you were in my house just barely three days ago so at what point did you know? Did you find out that I was a side chick? Because let me throw this question now. Is there any wife, any Nigerian wife here that you know that somebody is your husband's side chick or you'll be comfortable coming to their house, eating their food, rolling with them, calling them daughter? That means you actually do not love your husband in the first place now. If you are comfortable with running all these kind of activities with the, with the so-called side chick, and I have a lot of videos of me and her. I have a lot of videos, videos of me and her in hotel. I have a lot of videos of me and her going, even, even on my birthday, we celebrated my birthday. In so many places, shopping together, doing things together. We were that close. So, all of a sudden, we're talking about sending 12,000 and not sending 12,000. All of a sudden, she was the first person in my life that has ever defamed me, defamed my person or defamed my character or called me out. Before then, nobody has ever called me out. Nobody has ever said anything ill about me. I've never had any fracas with anybody. So I took the conversation, um, the, the threat messages on Instagram from this said girl, and I went to um, Aja police station to make a report. When I went to Aja police station, they saw all this screenshot and they said, oh, this is cyber bullying and threat of life. So they invited the girl to come to the station. And make a report and so that she can give her own account as to why she was threatening my life they came the police people went to at the time when they wanted to invite uh, arrest her 
she was in daddy's house that's mr Ebu's house that's where she was she was at the house with the wife they were sitting and discussing so when they came they said okay they wanted to arrest a social person nobody even invited her being the wife to the police station no they told the girl, this is the reason why we're coming here to arrest you and all of that. And she stood up. She said, if they're taking the girl anywhere, she will go. That she will go anywhere they're taking the girl, that she's going to go alongside with the girl. The police people now said, okay, your mother, welcome. So when they went to the station and all, all, of, all of us were there, they were narrating everything. Daddy said, daddy narrated the, the then DPO. He, if the then DPO can attest to most of these things that I'm about to say now. It was the daddy told them, he said, okay, this is a person that I have been with for the past almost a year. That he told them about the issue he was having, <clears throat> the issue he was having with his wife, the issue he has been having, and why he left the house and all of that. And that I haven't wronged him in any way. In fact, that he's surprised that that his wife is dragging me. He told them how I've been of help to the family, how even the wife came to the house barely a few days ago to take food and all of that. So later, the said girl came and was begging me when she saw that I wanted to charge the case to cut and all of that. She was begging. They were pleading. She even said she wanted to do a video. She said she wanted to do a video in Aja Police Station and apologize to me. The next thing she was supplying inf uh, some information to Gislova. She would say this in a police station. She would go to Gislova and supply another information. She would tell Gislova, oh, the family have said, and, and this is the same girl that came to meet me that uh, her uh, Instagram account is not growing, that she wanted me to help her grow her account, that she has been with daddy for a very long time. A lot of people knows that with daddy, she has been with daddy for a very long time, that her social media platforms are not growing, that she doesn't know how I, I do it, that me, within a very short time, I, I just blow, a lot of people know me on social media and stuff. <clears throat> and I told her that, <clears throat> excuse me, I was just doing my thing from my own heart, from my goodwill, I was just doing my thing, I wasn't expecting much. It wasn't like there was a pattern I was following. I wasn't following any pattern. I, it's not like I studied this in school. I was just doing my thing from the depth of my heart, from the genuineness of my heart, and things were coming along. You know, I thought, okay, I was going to help you, you know, find a way you're going to grow your page. I'll give you some tips. And I was actually giving her some tips on how to build her page. So as far as I know, this was a pure case of envy and jealousy. A case of envy and jealousy from that point where they dragged me on social media from the first time. Then they claimed that they apologized. Later, she went on just lover. She sent a whole different... It, it, different things were happening in the police station. Different things were being carried on this lover. She would say, eh, Mr. Ebo has gone back to the family. Him and the wife has confirmed. And the Jasmine girl has... What happened? That same day, after this lover dragged me, after I was dragged on social media, after the wife uh, paraded me on social media as a terrible person, after the whole reconciliation, where did the man sleep? Where did daddy, where did Mr. Ebo sleep? He still came back to sleep in my house. He still came back to sleep in my house. After the whole thing, the wife came back or came out on social media and said, I have accepted Jasmine as uh, my, 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 my adopted daughter. I have not accepted that. You were the one that started telling people that I was your daughter. You were the one that started parading me as your daughter. You were telling all, your, all of your friends that I'm, I'm your daughter, that I've been like a daughter to you, that I'm the, I've been of help to you. You were the one parading me like that. Then you came and say you've accepted me as your daughter, you've accepted me as a social media manage, uh, hand, manager and, and what not. You know, I didn't quite say anything. You know, after much, we did that interview at Daddy Free's place because that first time I had all the proofs, thank God. Both the money I was sending to her, I showed everything on Daddy Free's life. Both the, the land they just said, they just sold, the land they sold, everything. Whatever happened that period was just a kiss of jealousy i don't know where that jealousy emitted from because you you sh you cannot jealous somebody that you are benefiting from you cannot envy someone that you're benefiting from you know that you are benefiting directly from this person if i'm a terrible person as the whole world is painting me to be will i open a tiktok account for that woman and grow the account will i in any way contribute to her paying her children's school fees Will I be spending my time? Let me not call it a waste of time. Going life with daddy, generating money, I still remitting that money to her and daddy. I don't even want to. I don't even want to look at, go back and look at the sacrifices I've made for this family. A lot of people are saying this girl is using Mr. Ibu. She's using. How am I using Mr. Ibu? How am I using daddy? I want to know. How am I? How can you be using someone that is benefiting directly from you? A lot of people are saying she, he's a sugar daddy. Look at me very well. At my age, 
If I want to go and have a sugar daddy, I will look for one that is doing very well, financially okay, that can actually provide for me, not somebody that directly is benefiting from me. I'm not saying this to bring anybody down. I'm saying this just exactly the way it is. This is the one that when I came back, daddy could not boast of 5,000 naira of his own. And the people who directly around him, they know that. Sorry to say, AGM president is fully aware of what I'm saying right now because I was there so many times when daddy would call him, being the AGM president and asking for money. The AGM president would send 5,000, 50,000, 20,000, so many times. He knows. They all know. Most of them in the industry know, knew that around the period I came back, daddy was not doing fine. They know. They know the story. They cannot see. They don't know the story. They know. They know he, he was at his lowest when I came back. So I want to make sure that of all the people in Nigeria, I don't go to people that will help my life, people that will, that will help me be a better person somehow, people that will provide for me financially. I'm doing sugar daddy with someone that was benefiting directly from me financially. So back for, um, fast forward to all this thing that happened. I was dragged on social media. By the grace of God, I had it the opportunity to come and clear myself on so uh, on that in free's life and everything after everything happened people were warning me stay away from this woman someone that can go this far to bring you down this person does not want your progress stay away from her me if anybody that knows me know me jasmine eh? i'm not someone that carries things to heart anybody that knows ask anybody that has ever had direct contact with me i can boldly say financially daddy might not have helped me financially but from doing what i was doing from the depth of my heart just from trying to support him from the depth of my heart. People came to love me through his platform. I was also able to, to build my platform. I was able to build a fan base from, a, from, from the fan base of people that love him. If I wasn't doing, I did not just sit back and started having followers, no. I was not just sleeping and started having followers. I wasn't even looking for that fame at the time it came. I was just doing my thing, being that person that was trying to re resurface him back to the internet. It was a mutual thing. When I came back, nobody was talking about daddy now. Nobody was talking about Mr. Ebo on social media. Nobody. He has built his name legendary. Yes, I acknowledge that. But at that time, he was not that hot. Okay, people were not look, looking, looking out for him. It was when I came back, I, put, I brought him back to the limelight. I recovered everything that was lost. Brother Shaggy reached out to him. Brother Shaggy actually reached out to me directly. I was the one that made that skit happen. And that money was paid to his wife. That money was paid to his wife. I cannot count how many people that this kids with daddy and the money was sent to his wife directly. Daddy will not even take one error from the money. He will send it to his wife. It was in a bit to bring daddy back to the limelight that God showed me favor. It was in a bit to bring him back to the limelight that God showed me mercy and people started to love me. But some people did not well sit, sit well with it. Some people did not like the fact that I was going fast. They were talking about it. Even look at the voice audio that they, they posted. They say I was having an affair with daddy. The woman on the voice audio, what was she talking about? And Jasmine, who is Jasmine? That Jasmine is claiming she's your daughter. She just got fame overnight. She's making no money overnight. Look at, look at their pain. Daddy, daddy, after your wife begged me that I should stay at my place, now I'm hearing some kind of news that my ear cannot even carry. That I'm having an affair with you and I'm having an affair with Biggie. Eh? People of the world. How can it be possible? My own daughter, how can it be possible? Whoever brought, brought this topic forward will take punishment. Eh? That, you, that, that you've had an affair with me, that I was your girlfriend before you now adopted me as your daughter. I'm like, what kind of talk is this? Yeah. People that say it, I think they will continue with gossip. And the only time of results, for those people that gossip, they will still receive their own results. When did that kind of thing happen? Ever? When did that kind of thing happen? It's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible. Look at, look at their disturbance. Look at what is giving them sleepless nights. The fact that you that fan base, if it was up to them to take it down, they would have taken it down a very long time ago. But let me not deviate from the issue. We went to meet daddy in Abuja, like I said, he was working with um, he, he had um, crutches or whatever it is, this stuff that they used to hold on the hand, not wheelchair crutches. So 
he wasn't working very well his state of health was so bad already there were some cuts on his leg i was asking him and daddy what happened to your leg what what, what is all this mark he not explained the traditional thing that his friend called some house people it was through him that i find, i knew that they called some traditional people to come and treat him and then i said okay he said he wants to go back to lagos about the money from the show they said uh, that they were still remitting money from the show so they did not give us any physical cash or give daddy 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 in fact even the money i sent to his account when he left lagos when he was coming back his account was zero zero they did not give him any cash at hand neither was there any money in his account when he was coming back to to lagos when we went to the airport at abuja I'll try and check the dates. That day, Daddy could not work at the airport. I had to go in and order for, um, ask for wheelchair. I, when the son went in to get wheelchair, they said they cannot give wheelchair. That um, the airport people said they, they cannot take the wheelchair outside. That they can only use the wheelchair within the premises of the airport. I went in there. I was screaming. I was screaming. I was saying, "My father has served you people for a very long time. My father has done this. He has served the public. He has done this. He has done it. Please have mercy. Give chair." I was screaming like a mad person. Anybody working in Abuja Airport that day, they can attest to what I'm saying now. I was screaming. I was screaming until somebody came and said, "Okay, it's Mr. Ibu. Please let's give him wheelchair." They came. They use wheelchair. They carry him. When they took him to the checking point, they said that he cannot fly. That he states he's having shortness of shortness of breath. That we need to bring something they call fit to fly. The airline will book say he cannot fly. I started begging them again that he has to fly. He has an appointment with a doctor waiting for him in Lagos. That if he doesn't go to Lagos right now, that his health will will deteriorate more, and nobody is going to take look after him in Abuja and all of that. So out of sympathy, they allowed us to fly that day. Those airport people, they carried him in, in on the wheelchair. When they were taking him to the plane, they carried him like a little baby and put him in the plane. They, they, I, I hope those people can see this video and they can also attest to what I'm saying. When we were coming to Lagos, I called the wife, I called the son and the wife friend. It was a three-way call. Thank God that call was still recorded. I asked them, I said, where is daddy going to stay if he comes back to Lagos? The, the friend, everybody was the friend. I said, the wife first said that he cannot stay in her house, in their house, his house, his own house. And that he cannot stay there, that the house is not good for him, that water is entering the house, the house is in a bad shape. I said, um, but we can we can call people to come and stand, fill the house and put bed in the parlor and all of those things and adjust the house. The house is, is not as bad as, you know, he can stay there. She not say no, that in, in his current state of health, that he cannot stay there. And I told the friend, I said, Daddy cannot come back to my household because Daddy has been in Abuja for more than a month now and they've done this traditional treatment for him. I don't know his state of health. What if Daddy comes to my house and God forbid something happened? Who will I tell people? That call was his wife, his first son and the wife friend were in a three-way call. I said, what will I tell people if anything happened to Daddy? Nobody will understand. God forbid if Daddy sleeps and he doesn't wake up in this state of, I don't know his state of health. He doesn't look so good. Nobody will believe that I was trying to help, that I went all the way to Abuja when all of you, none of you, accepted to go and pick him in Abuja. I went to Abuja and pick him. I'm not looking for sympathy. I did what I did from the depth of my heart because that man stood in there as a father for me. I don't care what the entire world is saying. He was there when nobody for me, when my, daddy, my, when my dad, was, who was his friend, died. He was there for me. People that know me in Imsu, when I was doing my pedigree in Imsu, they know me, they know him, they know that he was visiting, they know. So many years ago. So the man was there for me. So in that night, we made that call. We not, they not, uh, I told the wife friend, can he stay at your place? She not said eh, that there is no space in her place. And she gave one reason. I don't want to say what that reason is, but yes. She gave a reason that he should not stay at her place. We had decided that we're going to rent, um, what was it called? Um shortlet i don't ask the question i said if we rent a shortlet who is going to stay with daddy there the wife not say and she'll come and be seeing him she'll be coming and going and all of that but after all the man has said he's not both of them have decided that they are not marrying again that they are done with the marriage now one thing i want to clear one thing i want to clear is daddy's marriage and his wife's marriage was either done or they were, whatever issue they have in their marriage they might not be legally divorced or they might have not have gone to any court to divorce. Has absolutely nothing to do with me. And have mercy on him and want to support him. 
I went and buy cake. I coordinated everybody. We did the bedding on the hospital. Still nothing happened. The next day they wanted to discharge him. When they wanted to discharge him, you said he was going to go and stay in my house. In my own house. The same day you people refer as stranger. Husband snatcher. So at what point did you realize that I was having an affair with him? At what point did you realize that I was sleeping with your husband? I was sleeping with your husband and you still wanted your husband to stay with me, to live with me. That I was having an affair with him. And you wanted him to come and live in my house. So perhaps if he had, if God forbid, if he, he had died in my house or God forbid anything bad had happened to him, I would have been in a bigger trouble right now. Nobody will believe the fact that I begged you to go and pick him from Abuja and you were conditioning me to book ticket for you and your friend. Nobody will believe the fact that I was the one that reconciled you and him. That is even talking to you today is me. I thank God his record. I would have been explaining all this thing. Nobody will believe me. I went from being your daughter to be a stranger, to be a home worker, to be husband snatcher. You do this thing, saying everything, forgetting that you as a woman, you have a daughter, a female child. And the way you treat other people's children is the way other people will treat your own children. I'm telling you, it's not a cause, it's karma. I'm not here to lay cause on anybody. I told the hospital, okay, oh, give me one day. I cannot take daddy to my house in this condition. And I came back. I said, ma, I'm going to cry out for help. I believe if I cry out for help, the Nigerians are going to help. I called her to, um, daddy. I called the wife together. We were on the bed. By that time, daddy's leg has already decayed to some extent. The hospital were even telling us that the way they are seeing this leg, that they will cut the leg. By that time, they cut daddy's leg. Um, I don't know what. It got infected. And it has started decaying. That the way they are seeing this leg, if care is not taken, that they are going to cut this leg off. The cell is giving us time. I was so afraid for daddy. I said, ah, I don't want daddy's leg to be cut. And that was not the only um, challenge daddy was having. I don't want to start taking some health um, um, in the state of his health. But that was not the only challenges he was having in his health. It wasn't only the leg when he came back from Abuja. But the leg was the worst one because it was pinning him. Pulse was coming out from the, from the traditional whatever they did from it. I have pictures of all the circles, the, the mark, the things they draw under this leg. I'll put it here so even will see. Even after they, they cut the leg, you can still see the lines from the razor cut on the leg. After they, the, 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 after they amputated his leg, you can still see marks from the, the, the whatever they did in Abuja on his leg. How come somebody is talking about that? I called the wife. I called daddy. We start on the bed. I told the, the, um, I, I, I first did the same. I, 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 what I'm saying now is what I said in the video. Nigeria, this is the condition of daddy. I've been the one paying the hospital bill. And I've been the one paying the hospital bill. And I have received of it. I cannot pay anymore. Is there any way you can support daddy? Before I cried out to, for donation, the hospital has already discharged daddy. Daddy would have gone on the wife said he should come and stay with me. He would have gone and stay with me in my house. And God forbid, he would have, something terrible would have happened to him. And I would have been in clinic and would have been in jail right now for something I know nothing about. Then we did the video. When I called, I said, Mommy, come and do video. Say something to Nigeria. When they see that the family is in unity, they will support him. She came, she said, Hey, Nigeria, my husband is dying. No, he's dying. No, he's dying. Somebody, I said, That's not how to appeal to Nigerians. I was like, Telling her what that or to what this is how you're going to say it. And then we did a video. Once that video happened, uh, got online, money started coming in. The account they were sending money to was an access bank account that daddy opened. And the day he opened that account, his son was right there with him. The uh, mobile app of that account, because as, as that is, uh, when I came back, when I came back to Nigeria, that he was not operating his mobile account, most of the uh, mobile app. He, he wasn't even using mobile app. So when he went to open that, when he went to open that um, access bank, he insisted that his son would be operating the mobile app on his phone, on his own phone. You can go to uh, access bank and, and make inquiry. If that, that, um, that as, um, what mobile app on that particular account, was ever logged into another account. It was in his son's phone. He put his son in charge of that account. Anyway, before before the donations, the money that were paid into that account for maybe those kids, the skit he did with Sydney, 
So he paid him money to that account. He told his son to send money from that account to his wife. So who has been controlling the account? His son. His son has been sending up money from that account to his wife. His son has been in charge of that account. When the donation came, the only thing I had access to was um, the SIM card that they're using to answer call. And uh, what is it called? Alert was coming. When the alert was coming, I'll show you how many see, see uh, this thing. In less than two hours, Nigerians have donated 40 million. Before you know, 60 million. In less than three days, 100 million there has been donated. Before that time, she has not come and said anything bad about me. Oh. I was not a stranger. I was not a home worker. I was not a terrible person. Before that donation, I was not the little Jasmine you people are labeling me to be. When the donation money started coming, she was the one that even met me and said, okay, oh, uh, she was very happy. She said, the first thing she said, ah, thank God, I, I, I was showing her from the, what was it, the alert. The first people were using to make call because I was the one answering call and people were calling to check in on, on him. Daddy's, daddy's main phone, daddy's phone was with the wife. Daddy's phone was with the wife. And that phone that the wife is holding, the main phone, I was the one that put it for him. The phone that um, I was with no, it didn't happen on Thursday, it didn't happen on Friday, it didn't happen on Saturday because the person that was supposed to sign the surgery was not in the country. He came back on Saturday and then they couldn't do the surgery during the weekend, so the surgery was later done on a Monday. Go to Everton and Hospital, find that. Go to Everton Hospital and find that. Did she remove herself from Nest of King? If she was a Nest of King in the bank. If she was nurse of king in the bank, would she have removed herself for whatever reason? Would she remove herself from nurse of king in the bank? Let, let Jasmine come and inherit the money. No. But it was in the hospital. It was something I had to do with life. And then you remove yourself so that I will go and sign. So that if anything happens to him, they will say Jasmine was the one that signed for him. And this surgery was a 90%, 30% surgery. A lot of people are saying, why did you why did you people fly the man abroad? You people are selfish, you people are greedy over all the money Nigerian donated. When daddy was taken to Evercare Hospital, how many times did you talk about flying him abroad? Even bringing quarter for in the time for good people like Peace Square. Peace Square tried so many times in his own way. He even went as far as going to the UK embassy, going to the US embassy, trying to look for urgent urgent travel part uh, this thing. He even went as far as contacting some people he knows personally to use private jet and fly daddy but he said his health condition at the time he came at, to the hospital was not stable that was not stable when he came to the hospital he couldn't fly all they were trying to do was to stabilize him his heart his kidney everything he was not stable they were doing everything they could to stabilize him one morning Okay, so after after the brother talk about sharing money with me, it didn't work. They talk about buying car with, um, for her, and they said she should be patient about the buying car. The son, the son was the, the the sons were selling from the money from that donation has been the money you people have feed have been feeding on. The sons have been sending you money. How much have they sent you so far from the donation money? The donation money is the money you're using to buy hair. All the weeks you bought, even the one you did on your birthday recently, you did photo shoot on your birthday. You did photo shoot on your bed, even when daddy was still ill, when he was still sick, you did photo shoot on the bed, you couldn't post it on your page, you went and post it on your daughter's page, and you were saying, your, and my mom is too busy that she couldn't post. But you did photo shoot, the same hair you used and the photo shoot, but the same hair you'll be using to come to police station. Your husband is sick, very, very sick, but you still remember to go and do photo shoot now. The same husband you are, you are driving me with for online that I'm trying, I'm the one, if anything happens to him, they should hold me responsible. You need photo shoot, you bought her, you bought new clothes with the money Nigerian donated for him. You don't even have money to do your upkeep. I don't care. It's your husband's money. Do whatever you want to do with it. It's not money you need to buy new shoes, you need to buy that, you need to maintain your lifestyle. Tell me any of these things that I'm saying on this video that is a lie. One time somebody came to the hospital to donate money for daddy. I was not there. The person called me. The person called me on my phone. 
that his daddy's old friend that they did one movie together. He's a director. He wants to contribute to daddy's health. I gave him your number to come and meet you at the hospital. He asked you for the donations, uh, donation account. You sent him your own personal account. You told him that the donation account is not good. He sent you one million naira to your own personal account. What did you tell your friend? That uh, you're going to save what you can, while you can. If not for your friend, how would I have known that somebody sent you one million naira? That you had just one million naira? Did you ever tell me? You did not tell me. It was your friend. And then I said the receipt for you. You said you're going to use the money to do your personal stuff. That was donation money. You used it for your personal stuff. I still did not challenge you. Why are you making me look like I'm the one in charge of this donation money? Even when you want money like this, you woke up, you carried all the police from Alago, you pack police, a lot of police people to come to my house. Only in the morning. They came, came to arrest me. Only in the morning. 6 a.m. Police people came to arrest me and 12 Mr. Evil's son. When, when that son came all the way from South Africa, he couldn't even live with you. He couldn't even live with you in the same house. Because you're giving him attitude, you're treating him like an outcast. Police came to my house, they took me to a labor police station. When we went to the police station, they soon told them that this phone was given to him by his father. This number up there has been there. He has been the one doing transactions. There's a proof of that. You people allege that I stole 300 million there. You still couldn't prove that I stole 300 million there. Then you started going to chat, say, hey, we chat this one. Who was in that chat? That you people were forcing the bank to bring that money every time, bring that money from the donation money. And he went to his father and told his father that, see what is happening now. The money donation and Nigerians donated for you, the donation money. This one is asking for money. This one is asking for money. And the father told him, see the particular amount of money in your account. They tell them you no longer have access to my own account. So whatever money there is, will be from the money in his own account. Nigeria, let me ask you, somebody stole 55 million naira for over a month and he did not use that money, that money is still in his account. He's, he has chances to travel, he cancelled the travel three times just to be with his father in his hospital. How is it possible? If you steal money, your next target should be running. That's why they kill me, they say, I, I, I plan to travel, travel on the 7th of of, of December, when I don't even have a stamp on my passport, I don't even have a visa on my passport. They said I'm trying planning to travel on this on the seventh of December. That's why those police people followed me people and came and arrested me in my house and locked me up because they thought I was about to travel. When they came, there was no visa on my this thing. They saw even in my chat. Even the police see my chat. Where I, I chatted with, I paid for my travel since August. You know, the police people see in my chat severally where I canceled my trip to UK because of this situation. Where I was telling the agent that I can't travel now because of that situation, and yet I wanted to go with the money. He went and said, I, I defend you. How you defend me so many times, and I haven't said anything about it. <laughs> when you black call people from the village, tell them that I'm the, I'm the and the problem of the family, they should cripple me. They call me service first so to ask. If just is the problem of the family, that's how I know you people involved native doctor in this whole thing. I call Mariam. Mariam Oya I say, Mariam, I'm afraid of my life. This is what happened. Mariam now going to just love her and complain. When Mariam was going to just love her, I told Mariam, please, do not take this thing to just love her. I don't want to drag anybody if anybody does not drag me. Even when Mariam was insisting, come to just love her, tell just love her your own side of the story. I kept, I, I kept over, I said, over, I don't want to drag anybody if anybody does not drag me. Me personally, I knew right from the onset that the story I read online about how she took 50 million era and uh, dating Mr. Ibu's son, they wanted to travel out of the country to go and embezzle the money. I knew that it was all like that's why I never jumped on the train. I waited patiently to hear from her or Mr. Ibu himself. They said they arrested them. I said, hmm, Mr. Ibu's wife was at it again. I know definitely that that woman pain was like, she never lay hands on that money. Even the little money you have from her now, like what Jasmine said there. Even the little money that was in her possession, she rented the house of four million, but she said it's 24 million. 20 million was gone. And the money she said, she claimed that she paid for medical bills, all of them were gone. And the remaining 50 million, she was craving for it because she wanted to lay hands on it. 
lot of you know that how she was pretending. This woman had bad Mr. Ibu when Mr. Ibu was sick. After Jasmine cried out, very dark man posted the video, talk about the video, talk about how to donate for Mr. Ibu. Uh, today had not posted it. Boom, Nigeria responded, making donation from left rights up down for this man. Automatically, the woman who never cared came out again and started pretending to love Mr. Ibu, going to Mr. Ibu to feed him in the hospital and pretending to make Nigeria believe that Jasmine is the bad person, she is the good person. Everybody knew that she's the good digger. But unfortunately, if you have not watched that particular video that will make about this lady, I want you guys to watch it. What do you guys think about it? We want to hear from you in the comment section. Do you believe Jasmine? Do you believe Mr. Ibu's wife? Oh, uh, let's just wait to hear from Mr. Okafor himself. We are still waiting to hear from him directly. But unfortunately, he have not spoken. But we just want you guys to get the tips of what is going on out there. I know you must have heard that police arrested Jasmine and Mr. Okafor's son for allegedly taking 50 million. We know that it was not Mr. Ibu that ordered their arrest, but Mr. Ibu's wife. We all knew that Mr. Ibu's wife have been the one behind everything that is going on within this family. All she needed is money. Your husband was sick. All you care about is how you're going to look that they should give you money for BBL. Do for who? Exactly. Not for your sick husband now. Even women sell their land, sell property to make sure their husband is healthy. But your home particularly was like, okay, all you need, people are donating for my husband. I need my own share. I need my own gain. I need my own profit. Your husband was alive. All you need now is your own will. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh God. This woman, I don't know where Mr. Okafo gets her from, but her, she's benefiting from Mr. Ibo's payment. I'm not talking about Mr. Ibo's adopted daughter. I'm talking about the wife. Like, she just wants Mr. Ibo to be down while she's enjoying and enjoying the world. I don't know. I'm not laying accusation on you. I'll be following the story up. Mr. Ibo talk about it now. Like, he don't want this woman because this woman wrecked him from like this to like this. Now this woman is pressing him down because he wants all the money donated. Imagine the money was still in Mr. Ibu's account and this woman lay hands on that money. What do you think? Mr. Ibu would have returned from hospital meeting nothing. All she would have said, I use the money to take care of you now. We pay for this, we pay for your husband, we pay for this, the money is gone. Nobody would have knew how much they donated because you cannot sue his wife. I'm his wife. Thank God that is how ended this way but we are still waiting to hear from mr Abel. what is your take do you believe jasmine do you believe mr Abel's wife do you believe the police who didn't make any investigation but just quick to make arrest and the lay accusation release the report out there and all of that so what is your take about it we want to hear from you the comment section until we meet again stay tuned with plan b tv peace out dating me is hard the moment you stop giving me attention i'm already single 